Have you ever felt overwhelmed by GCSE physics? Like the subject was a black hole sucking in all of your understanding. I was there too, but guess what? I managed to get a score of A star with 98 PUM on my GCSE physics exam. And by using some simple tips, tricks and strategies, you can do this too. Not sure how to go about this? Don't worry, you're in the right place to find out. I'm Aryan. This is how I got an A star with a score of 98 on my IGCSE physics exam and here's how you can too. The first step is always effective preparation. Here I don't just mean effectively preparing for the exam, no, while that is important, I'm telling you to go one step further and effectively plan out all of your preparation. To get an A star, you need to know the syllabus like the back of your hand. Break it down into manageable chunks and make a study schedule. Visual aids like mind maps and flashcards can also be extremely helpful in organizing your information. Make sure that you don't miss out on any content or recent additions to the syllabus. I always recommend that students should go through the syllabus document of the subject that they're studying before they start revising it, in order to make sure that there aren't any new or recent additions to the syllabus which might not be covered in their notes that they're reading or their textbook or the past papers that they'll be solving, in order to avoid missing any important information. And hey, as usual, for a full guide on how to create the perfect study schedule, I'll have a video linked in the description down below. Okay, so there are three main types of resources that you can use in your IGCSE physics preparation. The first of these is learning materials, as in the things that you actually use when you're learning the concepts and the theory for the first time. So this can be things like your textbook, revision notes online on websites like Znotes or Save My Exams, or topic explainer videos here on YouTube. I see a lot of people who underestimate the theory portions of physics, instead opting to just memorize formulae and apply them to numericals. But, and I cannot stress this enough, you won't be able to get an A star unless you have solid conceptual understanding. So don't neglect these learning materials in your revision process. The second kind of resource is topical questions. You can find these both at the end of each chapter of your textbook and on a lot of different websites online. For a full guide on where you can find these online and also a lot of other online resources that can be helpful throughout your IGCSE and A-level journey, I'll have another video linked in the description down below. Make sure to solve these topical questions after you finish studying each concept and before you move on to the next one, so that the concept is still fresh in your mind and you can identify and address any issues that you may have before moving on to the next thing. Lastly, past papers and past exam questions. These are by far the single most important resource in your IGCSE physics journey, so make sure to do as many of these as possible. Okay. So really quickly, here are some things that you should keep in mind when you're solving past papers. First, always time yourself. This is self-explanatory. Make sure that you do all of your past papers under timed conditions. Second, if you don't know a concept or question when it arises in a past paper, don't try to just make up an answer and write something down. This isn't an exam. Don't waste time on things like that. Getting more marks on a past paper really isn't important. What is important is reading the marks theme of that question, understanding exactly what the examiners want from you, and then going back and revising the topic to make sure that you don't have that same issue during your actual exam. Oh, by the way, speaking of mark schemes, third, if you end up in a situation where you don't have enough time to finish all of the past papers which you had intended to write before your exam, just quickly reading through the question papers and their mark schemes is an incredibly efficient way of going through everything that would have been asked on them and also identifying trends. You'll find that IGCSE physics papers have a lot of questions which can be answered using information that you've already learned or memorized in the past and where the actual context of the question isn't important. For example, there's a lot of phenomena that they ask you to explain pretty regularly such as how sweating helps cool down your body on a hot day or how alpha particles ionize air, things like that. They also love to ask you to define things like Newton's second law or redshift. Remember, these are questions that you can answer without knowing the context of the rest of the questions around them. It doesn't matter what part B and C of a question say if part A is simply asking you to define Newton's first law, 
which is something that you can easily have memorized in advance. So now that you're aware of the existence of these questions, whenever you're doing past papers, try to identify them and read through the official mark schemes to understand exactly what the examiners are expecting you to write in order to get each individual mark. A good way of revising these is to start a spreadsheet or a notebook where whenever you encounter one of these knowledge-based questions while solving a paper, you note it down or put a screenshot of it alongside what exactly the mark scheme's points are for getting each individual mark. This means that you can quickly go through this on the day before the exam and revise all of these, helping you minimize any marks lost on these questions. If you do your preparation right, all of these questions are basically just free marks since there's no way to twist them or for the examiners to trip you up, as long as you just write exactly what you've prepared and read in advance. Also, try to get into the habit of immediately identifying what topic or concept a certain question is trying to test you on. For example, if you see a question about motion, where the acceleration of the body is constant or the forces acting on the body are constant, then you should immediately be able to identify that this is a kinematics question that you can solve using the SUVAT equations. However, on the other hand, if you notice that acceleration or force is variable, or if you're dealing with the work done on a body, you should immediately know that you're dealing with conservation of energy. Quickly identifying what exactly you're being tested on in a question can save time that might be wasted in identifying the correct route to solving the problem. Trust me, it's really helpful, it saves you time and improves your efficiency. Take the example of a question where a heater circuit is being used to melt a block of ice. Part A of the question might ask you to identify the power of the heater based on a diagram of its circuit. Part B of the question might ask you to identify the time taken to melt, say, one kilogram of ice using this heater. If you don't immediately identify what each question is trying to ask you, you might end up wasting time thinking about, say, thermodynamics in part A when you should instead be focusing on electrical circuits. However, once you've done your identification, you will straight away know that you need to apply one of the power formulae to part A and you need to apply E is equal to PT and E is equal to ML to get the right answer for part B. Another trick that you can use to maximize your marks is figuring out how to effectively check your exam papers. Once you're done solving a question, try to identify potential additional methods to reaching the final conclusion. For example, if you've been told to find the amount of energy dissipated in a resistor and you've done this by identifying the potential difference across the resistor and then applying P is equal to V squared by R, you can check this by quickly calculating the amount of current passing through the resistor and then using either P is equal to I squared times R or P is equal to VI. Similarly, if you solved a question where you had to find the velocity of a body falling through a uniform gravitational field using v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as, you can recalculate your answer using conservation of energy and then compare this with your initial answer in order to make sure that you haven't had any sort of inaccuracy. To get used to identifying these alternative methods of solving the same kind of question and excellent resources, as usual, my favorite, reading the mark schemes. Mark schemes typically contain alternative methods of solving most of the longer questions and going through all of these can help you identify a lot of different ways to go about approaching the same kind of problem. So to summarize, effective planning coupled with a full utilization of all the resources available to you will help you get an A star in IGCSE physics. Make a proper study schedule. Don't neglect topical questions or your textbook, and of course, do as many past papers as possible and read as many mark schemes as possible. Anyways, as usual, if you found any of the advice I gave you in this video helpful, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you never miss an upload. And if you have any questions, want to share your own IGCSE success stories, or want more tips from me on how to get an A star, feel free to leave a comment down in the comment section below. I'll try to answer as many of y'all's questions as possible. Anyways, that's all for today. I'm out and thank you very much for watching.